I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. It was August 30th. A 12-year-old boy shows up at a stranger's house. He's emaciated. He's got tape around his legs. He's hungry and he's thirsty. What's your mom's name? Ruby Frankie? Ruby Frankie is his mom's name. Ruby Frankie. Ironically, she'd been a high-flying Mormon momfluencer, attracting two and a half million followers on her YouTube channel, Eight Passengers. Ruby's personal brand built around tough love. I was really hoping that like, keeping them home from school and wiping the floorboards would like really bring pain. But now Ruby's 12-year-old son's pain brings this neighbor to tears. This boy has been <laughs> Kid has obviously been, he's been, he's obviously covered in wounds. The house the boy says he escaped from, Jody Hildebrandt's. Hours south of Ruby's house. I'm Jody Hildebrandt. And I'm Ruby Frankie. Jody was a marriage counselor who also treated sex addiction through her work with the counseling network, Lifestar. She joined forces with Ruby Frankie on a life coaching business called Connections. All of us want connection. We want to have relationships where we feel close and where, where there's love. After that 911 call, Ruby's 12-year-old son and her 10-year-old daughter were taken to the hospital. The police find laptops, tablets, cell phones. They find ropes. They find duct tape. They find handcuffs. Jody and Ruby were arrested and charged with six counts of felony child abuse. While the arrest sent shockwaves, some who knew Jody Hildebrandt have been raising concerns for years. We knew that Jody does this. We knew 14, almost 15 years ago that she's already done this to me. Jesse Hildebrandt, who uses they, them pronouns, has spent years finding a voice after suffering what they call brutal abuse at the hands of their aunt Jody. She would lock me in this room and write out my sins on a paper. She would come back in and read these sins back to me and have me kneel on the floor on my hands and knees and beg for forgiveness. The 30-year-old has built a life far away from a strict Mormon upbringing. I grew up in a very traditional Mormon household. Dad is the provider and my mom was a stay-at-home mom. My younger childhood was very happy. But during adolescence, Jesse started to rebel. The conflicts came to a head. Jesse's parents decided it was best for Jesse to go live with Aunt Jody, and without warning, they left their teenager at a family gathering. Woke up to a knock on the door, and it was Jody and my grandma and grandpa, and to tell me that my life as I knew it was about to change. At first, Jesse says they decided to give the new arrangement a chance. After all, Jesse's aunt was a licensed counselor. Jody Hildebrandt has been one of the top recommended therapists by the Mormon Church in Utah for at least 15 to 20 years. But at home, Jesse says their aunt was an altogether different person. She made me sleep outside in the snow. She duct taped me. Um, I wasn't allowed to speak to anyone. What in theory was the justification for the duct tape? The duct tape was, in her words, an external reminder to me that I'm a liar and that every word that comes out of my mouth is a lie. In March of 2010, Jesse made it to the police station in American Fork and filed a report against Aunt Jody. Jesse's statements in that report echoing the story they told us, duct tape over her mouth, sleeping outside, not allowing her to talk. Police sent Jesse to a teen safe home, but after one day, Jesse ended up back with Aunt Jody. So after I went to the police, the punishments got more and more severe. After nearly a year of living with Aunt Jody, their aunt brought Jesse to work. And I have to, like, I have, like, it is now or it is never. And I grabbed that jacket and I literally just started running. Jesse never went back. With dark accusations against Jody coming to light, Principles, if you will. scrutiny is also falling on her partner on connections, Ruby Frankie. They are distorted. People who watched Eight Passengers were the ones to first kind of ring the alarm as to this alleged abuse that we're seeing now. People have been pointing out how problematic this family is for a while. When does the way a parent parents go from cringeworthy 
to child abuse. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. <laughs> You've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> After the controversy, viewers were questioning Ruby's parenting style and her husband Kevin's, who often joined her on the Eight Passenger channel. The two have now been separated for more than a year. Many of the viewers of Eight Passengers over the past two or three years became more and more disturbed and started turning Ruby and Kevin into Child Protective Services in Utah. In 2020, a Change.org petition requesting that CPS check on the children received hundreds of signatures. Impact has obtained records showing police responded to the Frankie home more than a dozen times over the past few years, including several reports of juvenile problems in 2018 and 2019, and multiple welfare checks in 2022. And to the point where they felt like it was a necessity to go talk to the family at least to the children, to find out if there was any merit to any of the allegations. But police who investigated the case were unable to speak to the children and filed a request for a warrant to enter the home. Even though it was submitted to the judge, the warrant was not signed and it wasn't granted. And so there wasn't much they could do at that point. CPS is now being investigated for their handling of the case by Utah's Child Welfare Legislative Oversight Panel. Through his attorney, Ruby's husband, Kevin, says those early complaints were nothing serious. Kevin felt like that they were just being harassed by people online calling the authorities and having to come to their home. It was just a difference in parenting style, but nothing abusive up to that point. After the shocking arrest, there's a growing chorus of people laying the blame squarely on Jody Hildebrand. It's 100% Jody. And I understand why the public is focusing on Ruby. It's Ruby's children. But all of these theories and these modalities and these, these um, parenting ideas, that all comes from Jody. Kevin feels like Jody manipulated the entire family, children included. Since her arrest, Jody Hildebrand has given up her counseling license. Sitting in a striped prison jumpsuit, Jody answered to a higher authority, a judge. Jody Nan Hildebrand? Yes. Okay. Ruby Frankie sat expressionless, a far cry from the bubbly momfluencer of Eight Passengers fame. Miss Frankie, can you hear me? Yes. Both ordered held without bail, and neither have entered a plea. Impact reached out to both Ruby and Jody's attorneys. Ruby's declined to comment. We have yet to hear back from Jody's. Just one count of aggravated child abuse is up to 15 years in jail. At the same time, they can say, you know what? We found out you abused them six different times. You can really get to a high number here. Ruby's four minor kids are in the state's custody, but their father, Kevin, seen here in these DailyMail.com photos, is trying to win them back. His hopes and his objective is to convince the state that he's a good dad and that those children would be much better off with him than in state's custody. For Jesse, healing and moving on has been a long and winding journey. I was incredibly unstable in my early 20s. I thought that I was evil. I, I thought that I was this unlovable creature from hell. Jesse is not currently speaking with their parents. Jesse says the wounds from the alleged abuse at the hands of Aunt Jody still too raw. Impact reached out to Jesse's father for comment and did not receive a response. Jesse is now living life on their own terms and recently moved to Seattle to be a tattoo artist. I've been a musician pretty much my whole life. This is just a song about, about just relationships, <laughs> like all, all good songs. Up the last scheduled train to the city Watch the glow from the street lights go by. What would you say to Jody if she were sitting across from you right now? You did not win. And you do not own my life. You have no power. Our thanks to Juju.
You can see the full episode of Ruby Frankie, a momfluencer's double life on Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.